One year after surviving a traumatic car crash, a newly hired security guard begins seeing a vengeful woman's spirit in the department store's mirrors. During a session with his therapist, Dr. Beaumont, Max recounts the car accident from one year ago that resulted in his fiance Kayla's death. The man admits that he continues to blame himself for what happened because he was driving. Then, he adds that since the accident, he started seeing things that aren't real, but insists he isn't crazy. So the doctor says that through their two months of daily sessions, Max may be ready to let go of his misplaced guilt and stop blaming himself for the accident. However, the man counters that if he forgives himself, there won't be anyone to blame anymore. Then, he confides that it's gotten to the point that when he looks in the mirror, he no longer knows what's real. One evening, evening at the soon-to-be-open Mayflower department store, Henry, the security guard, goes on his usual rounds of the empty building. In the lobby, the man removes the paper covering a large mirror and admires his reflection. Suddenly, he sees the image move on its own, bewildering him. Then, the reflection drops his flashlight, grabs the shards of broken glass on the floor, and places them in his mouth. Confused and afraid, Henry feels the sharp pain of the glass in his mouth and throat as the image menacingly stares and chews. The security guard suffers from the same injuries as his reflection, and blood spills from his mouth, causing him to double over on the floor in intense agony. A week later, Max answers a call from his father, Jack, the person who owns the department store. He tells his son that because of a woman's disappearance two months ago and the security guard going crazy, cutting himself up and quitting, they might not be able to open the store on schedule. So Jack asks Max if he wants to take the job as a night watchman because it might help take his mind off things. The son accepts the offer and thanks his father for the opportunity. That afternoon, Max sees Elizabeth struggling while trying to put up a missing flyer on a lamppost and offers to help. In the department store, Jack introduces his son to Keller, the store manager, Jenna, the head buyer for the store, and Ryan, vice president of operations. Before they go their separate ways, the father tells his son to contact Ryan if he ever encounters any problems during his rounds on duty. In the break room, Max punches his time card to start his shift, then pours himself a cup of coffee in front of the mirror. However, when he looks back up at his reflection, he's startled by the ghostly image of a woman. The man steps back in fright, but when other employees enter the room and ask if he's alright, he tries to play it cool and leaves. The next day, Dr. Beaumont asks if he took any substances before the episode last night and he says no. When he shares that the woman in the reflection looked like a corpse, the doctor says she might have reminded him of Kayla and it was his mind's way of processing the mental shock. The man wonders if he needs to be institutionalized, but the therapist says they imply the exact opposite because these episodes mean he's ready to let go of the guilt. She adds that now that he's no longer abusing substances and alcohol, he's ready to process the tragedy in earnest. That night, Jenna enters her bedroom busily talking to someone on the phone and she doesn't notice her creepy reflection staring at her from the mirror. Meanwhile, Max logs into the computer in the security room and clicks on Henry's personal files folder. Inside, he finds recorded videos from a hidden camera in the ladies' restroom. Suddenly, Keller appears, prompting the security guard to quickly close the video. Concurrently, Jenna disrobes and steps into the shower. Later, Max goes on his rounds and ends up in the lobby where he takes his medication. Seconds later, Later, he sees Jenna's clothless reflection in the large mirror. Then, he stares in horror as the woman places her hands on the sides of her face and effortlessly pulls off her head. Meanwhile, Jenna steps out of the shower when she nicks her leg with a razor. She grabs a tissue from the drawer in front of the mirror and dabs the injury. However, when she looks back up, her image slams on the mirror, spooking her. Horrified, the woman falls back into the glass partition, breaking it, and she lands on the shards. Jenna tries to slowly move her body out of the shower, but a jagged pane of glass falls on her neck decapitating her. The next day, immediately after his shift, Max calls Dr. Beaumont's office to set up an appointment. Concurrently, detectives Houston and Piccarilli investigate Jenna's grisly death and find her work ID. After the session with a the therapist, the security guard asks if everything he's been seeing in mirrors is normal, and she says yes. Then, the woman explains that nobody sees anything in mirrors that isn't already a part of themselves, not even the things they think they're seeing. She explains that different cultures have their myths regarding mirrors, such as how Koreans believe a person's soul can be trapped inside one when it leaves the body. That afternoon, Max sees a handprint on the glass, but when he checks inside the room, there's no one on the other side. He heads back outside, and then the woman's ghost suddenly appears in a reflection. Seconds later, Ryan taps him on the shoulder and relays the tragic news regarding Jenna. When he finds out how she died, he realizes that her injuries are the same as what he saw in the mirror last night. 
That evening, Max stands in front of the lobby mirror and tries to call the ghost again, but nothing happens. Meanwhile, Ryan rides the apartment elevator, but he's too busy sifting through his mail to notice his reflection staring at him. In the department store, the security guard wanders into the storage area, and through an antique mirror, sees Ryan wailing in agony while holding in the spilling intestines from his open stomach. In the apartment, the man carries a knife and his cooked dinner to the living room. However, when he notices his reflection missing from the mirror, he drops the tray on the floor. Seconds later, the reflection appears and he watches as the image bends down and slices his Achilles with a blade. Even though it's only the reflection who performed the action, Ryan suffers the excruciating pain of the injury, so he falls to the floor no longer able to use his legs. Meanwhile, Max rifles through the employee files to find the man's information so he can call him up to warn him. Concurrently, Ryan drags his body across the floor to try and reach the phone, but before he's able to, the image slices its stomach open, and the man can do nothing but writhe in pain as an identical cut appears on his torso. Later, the detectives realize that it's now the third Mayflower employee involved in a strange incident, including Jenna and the woman who went missing two months ago. Then, they spot the anxious Max loitering outside the building and note that he's also an employee at the department store because of his ID. Minutes later, the son calls up his father to tell him that he's quitting the job because he's seeing things again. The understanding man says he doesn't care that Max is quitting because all that matters is he's okay. After the call, the security guard looks at a puddle and sees his father with cuts all over his face fearfully screaming. Worried this might be a vision of future events, the man heads to Jack's house. Meanwhile, the father takes pizza from the fridge and heats it in the microwave, but he doesn't notice his reflection staring at him. While the son runs as fast as he can to the house, the image takes the pizza cutter and rolls it over its face, causing Jack to touch his own due to a sudden pain. Fortunately, the security guard arrives just in time, and his father's reflection looks at him disdainfully for foiling its plans. Jack wonders why his son came to visit him in the middle of the night. So as an excuse, Max says he's there to tell him that he changed his mind and that he'd like to keep the job. When he returns to work, the detectives approach him by the entrance to ask him a few questions. They explain that there have been two deaths of Mayflower employees this week, and they find it suspicious that he was standing outside Ryan's apartment building earlier tonight. Max asks if he's a suspect, so the cops condescendingly retort that he isn't, but that it's a weird coincidence that he was there tonight and that he's also the head of security at the department store. So the security guard explains that per the establishment's protocol, he's to contact Ryan regarding any issues because he's the vice president of operations. When Detective Houston asks why he didn't just call the man, Max says they can check the phone records and they'll see that he did call, and when no one answered, he decided to go there in person. He adds that the time of the call should be around the same time the supposed murder occurred, absolving him of any wrongdoing. Before they leave, the cops emphasize that even though he's off the hook for now, they'll be keeping an eye on him moving forward. In the lobby, Max asks the spirit who she is and what she wants from him. Suddenly, his reflection shines its flashlight, so he follows the beam toward the ID of an employee named Eleanor, the woman he's been seeing in the mirror. Then, the light shines outside, and the security guard follows it to Eleanor's missing persons flyer on the lamppost. He calls the number on the flyer and arranges a meeting with Eleanor's sister, Elizabeth, tomorrow. The next day, he tries to explain to the woman that he sees her sister in the mirrors at the Mayflower, but she thinks he's playing a sick prank. However, the man acknowledges that what he's saying sounds crazy, but he swears he's telling her the truth. Later, Elizabeth asks why he's the only one out of all the employees that can see Eleanor. So the security guard recounts what happened a year ago. While he was driving the car one rainy night, he asked Kayla to move to the back seat to grab something from his backpack for him. The woman unbuckled her seatbelt and did as he asked, and she grabbed the engagement ring box he meant for her to find. Delighted, she put the ring on her finger, but seconds later, a drunk driver hit their car. Because she wasn't wearing a seatbelt, the woman flew out through the windshield while Max remained buckled to his seat and the airbag cushioned him from debilitating injuries. Kayla died instantly, and technically he did as well. However, the paramedics were able to transfer him to the ambulance just in time and they defibrillated him to bring him back to life. Max believes the near-death experience gave him the ability to see the other side. He asks Elizabeth how long Eleanor has been missing, and when she says two months, wonders if she believes she's still alive. The woman reveals that the night her sister disappeared, she woke up screaming and she knew right then and there that Eleanor died. She says the cops told her that her sister probably skipped town to start a new life, but she knows she'd never do that because 
their best friends. Max asks what Eleanor was doing that night, and the woman says she was at the Mayflower for a groundbreaking celebration party as a newly hired employee. Before parting ways, the security guard promises he'll call her if anything comes up. Later, Max sees Eleanor in the bathroom mirror and begs her to tell him what she wants him to do. However, instead of answering, the woman grabs the scissors from the sink and uses them to stab her eyes. Suddenly, the man wakes up and realizes it was all a nightmare. That evening, he calls Elizabeth to ask for the specific date of her sister's disappearance. However, when he searches for the security footage on the computer for September 22nd, he sees that someone deleted the file. He checks for the last person who viewed the video and learns that it was his predecessor, Henry, on September 24th. Later, the pair drops by Henry's house to speak to him. At first, the scarred man refuses entry, so Max forces his way in. All over the house, the paranoid man covers any reflective surface with cloths and towels. He deduces that Max sees Eleanor now too, and he claims that she wants to kill him. When the security guard asks why he deleted the files, Henry finally admits that Keller threatened to fire him if he didn't do it. He adds that the boss took him to the basement to delete the files and he simply followed the orders. Convinced that what they're looking for is in the basement, Max and Elizabeth head back to the car so they can return to the department store. Later in the basement, they find a crawl space behind a furnace that's been recently moved. Meanwhile, someone watches them from the security room and the person heads out to follow them. While Max ventures into the crawl space, Elizabeth stays put, but unbeknownst to her, someone lurks behind her. Suddenly, Keller grabs the woman and threatens to shoot if she makes any noise. Then, he tethers her wrists to a heavy shelf with duct tape. Moments later, Elizabeth manages to break free, and before she runs away, she warns Max that Keller has a gun. Conflicted, the armed man shoots at the security guard, but the latter evades the bullets. However, he stumbles to a corner where he finds Eleanor's lifeless body. Two months ago at the party, Jenna and Ryan set their sights on the new employee and planned on putting a substance in her drink so she would embarrass herself in front of their bosses. Later, while the man distracted Eleanor, the woman poured the substance into a drink and then offered it to the unsuspecting employee. In the present, Keller chases after Elizabeth and manages to grab her by the stairwell. When he looks at the reflection in the mirror, he sees Eleanor instead of her sister. Two months ago, Keller sees the inevitable employee and offers to take her home. However, the man drives into a deserted part of the building and takes advantage of Eleanor. She wakes up in the middle of the deplorable act and pushes him off her. The woman manages to get out of the vehicle, but the man continues chasing after her. In the present, Keller takes Elizabeth to the lobby, but he sees the ghost in the mirror. Two months ago, the unhinged man cornered the employee in the basement and strangled her. In her final moments, she reached toward a nearby mirror and it began to crack. However, when she finally died, the cracks disappeared as if nothing happened implying that the woman's soul transferred to the mirror world. In the present, Keller tries to strangle Elizabeth, but Max appears just in time to save her. While the two men fight, the security guard sees Eleanor in the mirror, so he pushes Keller toward the object, allowing the vengeful ghost to grab and take him to her dimension where she proceeds to kill him. The mirror shatters, so the relieved Max and Elizabeth share an embrace. Meanwhile, in the police station, Henry confesses to helping Keller move the furnace to cover the crawl space and that he also deleted the video files. So the detective asks if he's willing to sign a confession that he played a role in the conspiracy to cover up Eleanor's murder, and he nods. After the cops leave, the one-way mirror begins to crack, so Henry calmly walks toward it and accepts his impending death. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.